In the 19th century, the Netherlands recorded a staggering amount of brutality that cast a shadow over the untold contributions, struggles of the black community. Amidst the reputation of the Netherlands as a haven of progressive values and open-mindedness, a failed historical chapter persists, one that systematically suppresses the black cultural history. As we embark on this exploration, one must ponder what hidden layers of the Dutch past lie beneath the surface, obscured by the veneer of tolerance. This story seeks to illuminate the concerted efforts to efface the stories, struggles, and triumphs of the black community in the Netherlands, unveiling the enduring resilience of a culture determined not to be relegated to obscurity. Number one, the colonial legacy. The roots of the hidden black culture history in the Netherlands are deeply intertwined with its colonial past, marked by centuries of Dutch involvement in the transatlantic slave trade and the exploitation of colonies worldwide. The legacy of this dark period has left an indelible mark on the nation's history, yet it remains a largely unexplored and deliberately overlooked aspect of the Dutch narrative. The Netherlands, a prominent colonial power during the 17th century, established an extensive trade network that spanned the Atlantic Ocean, Africa, and Asia. The Dutch East India Company and the Dutch West India Company played pivotal roles in the economic exploitation of these regions leading to the rise of a prosperous Dutch Golden Age. However, this prosperity was built on the suffering of countless enslaved individuals, mainly from Africa, who were forcibly transported to the Americas to work on plantations. The peak of the Dutch involvement in the transatlantic slave trade occurred between the late 16th century and the early 19th century. During this time, Dutch ships carried an estimated 550,000 enslaved Africans across the Atlantic, contributing significantly to the economic growth of the Netherlands. However, this dark chapter in Dutch history has often been downplayed, with a reluctance to acknowledge the country's active role in the global slave trade. One of the most egregious examples of this suppression lies in the lack of recognition for the Dutch West India Company's involvement in the triangular trade. This company, chartered in 1621, operated in the Americas and West Africa, playing a central role in the transportation of enslaved Africans to the Caribbean and South America. The profits from the sale of slaves and slave-produced goods fueled the economic prosperity of the Dutch Republic during this period. The impact of the Dutch colonial legacy is not confined to the economic sphere. It extends to the cultural and social fabric of the Netherlands. The presence of black individuals in Dutch society during the colonial era is evident in historical records and artwork. However, there has been a tendency to overlook or downplay the significance of this diversity, contributing to the erasure of the black experience in the collective memory. One notable example is the portrayal of black individuals in Dutch art from the 17th century, often referred to as the Dutch Golden Age. Paintings from this era, such as those by renowned artists like Rembrandt and Vermeer, depicted scenes of domestic life, landscapes, and societal gatherings. While these paintings provide a glimpse into Dutch society during this period, they frequently neglect to represent the diverse population that existed, including the black presence that was an integral part of the cultural landscape. The impact of the Dutch colonial legacy reverberates across the Atlantic, especially in Suriname, a former Dutch colony in South America. The history of Suriname is deeply entwined with the transatlantic slave trade and the brutal conditions faced by enslaved Africans on plantations. The resilience and contributions of the Surinamese people, both during and after colonial rule, have been overlooked in the broader Dutch historical narrative. 
The erasure of Surinamese heritage in the Netherlands is evident in the limited representation and recognition of Surinamese languages, traditions, and cultural practices. Despite being an integral part of the Dutch Kingdom, Surinamese history and culture struggle to find a place in the mainstream discourse. This suppression contributes to the marginalization of the Surinamese community and the distortion of their role in shaping the multicultural identity of the Netherlands. The colonial legacy also extends to the political sphere, where the influence of Dutch colonialism is embedded in the structures of power. The hierarchical systems established during the colonial era, which often favor the Dutch elite, continue to impact the socioeconomic status of black communities in the present day. Number two, black presence in Dutch art. Within the concealed black cultural history in the Netherlands, another aspect emerges, centered on art, especially the representations of black individuals during the Dutch Golden Age. While this period is celebrated for its flourishing artistic achievements, the critical examination reveals a nuanced and often overlooked diversity that existed in Dutch society. The 17th century, considered the Dutch Golden Age, witnessed an unprecedented flourishing of arts and culture. Renowned artists like Rembrandt, Vermeer, and Franz Hals produced masterpieces that captured the essence of Dutch life. However, within these canvases, the black presence is conspicuously underrepresented, leading to a distorted perception of societal makeup. One significant aspect of this hidden history is the portrayal of black individuals in Dutch paintings. While the subjects of these masterpieces were often merchants, nobles, and everyday citizens, the black population of the time is notably absent or relegated to peripheral roles. This underrepresentation has contributed to an art historical narrative that overlooks the diversity present in Dutch society during the 17th century. The few instances where black individuals are depicted in Dutch art during this period are laden with racialized stereotypes and exoticized imagery. Notable works, such as Rembrandt's The Jolly Toper or The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Nicolaes Tolp include the representation of black figures, but they are often portrayed as exoticized symbols rather than integral members of society. The erasure of black presence in Dutch art is not solely limited to paintings. It extends to other forms of visual representation, such as engravings and illustrations. These images, which were circulated widely during the Dutch Golden Age, played a crucial role in shaping societal perceptions. However, the absence of diverse representations further perpetuated a skewed narrative that obscured the multicultural reality of Dutch society. One notable exception to this pattern is the work of Albert Eco, a Dutch painter commissioned by Johan Moritz, the governor of Dutch Brazil. Eckhout's paintings, created in the 17th century, stand out for their ethnographic accuracy in portraying the diverse population of Dutch Brazil, including individuals of African descent. Despite being an outlier, Eckhout's work highlights the potential for more inclusive artistic representations during the Dutch Golden Age. The impact of this skewed representation in art extends beyond the 17th century. The lack of visibility for black individuals in historical artworks has contributed to a collective historical amnesia, perpetuating the idea that the Netherlands has always been a homogenous society. Moreover, the omission of black figures from the visual record has implications for the construction of national identity. By excluding the black presence in artistic representations of Dutch life, a narrative has been crafted that reinforces an exclusive, Eurocentric understanding of Dutchness. This skewed portrayal not only negates the contributions of black individuals, but also contributes to the marginalization and invisibility of the black community in the broader societal narrative. In confronting this aspect of the hidden black culture history, 
there is an opportunity for the Netherlands to reevaluate its artistic heritage and acknowledge the rich diversity that existed during the Dutch Golden Age. It calls for a critical reassessment of historical artworks, ensuring that the contributions of black individuals are recognized and integrated into the broader narrative of Dutch cultural history. Unveiling the black presence in Dutch art is a crucial step in unraveling the hidden layers of history. The distortions in artistic representations during the Golden Age have perpetuated a selective narrative that obscures the true diversity of Dutch society. By critically examining and recontextualizing these artworks, the Netherlands has the chance to reclaim a more inclusive and accurate representation of its cultural heritage, one that welcomes the diverse heritage of its multicultural history. Number three, suppression of Surinamese heritage. The suppression of Surinamese heritage intertwines with the broader narrative of the concealed black culture history in the Netherlands. The narrative shaped by the colonial history of this South American territory under Dutch rule. The Surinamese experience reflects a complex interplay of colonization, enslavement, and cultural exchange. Yet, this historical chapter remains largely marginalized within the broader Dutch historical discourse. Suriname, situated on the northeast coast of South America, was a Dutch colony for over three centuries, from the early 17th century until its independence in 1975. The colonial period marked a dark era characterized by the exploitation of enslaved Africans on sugar, coffee, and cocoa plantations. The forced labor of enslaved individuals in Suriname contributed significantly to the economic prosperity of the Dutch Republic. Yet, this aspect of Dutch colonial history has often been overshadowed by other narratives. The 17th century saw the establishment of the first Dutch settlements in Suriname, with Paramaribo becoming the capital in 1667. The Dutch West India Company, responsible for the administration of the colony, implemented a brutal system of slavery that profoundly shaped the demographics and cultural landscape of Suriname. Enslaved Africans, forcibly brought to Suriname, played a pivotal role in the economic activities of the colony, enduring harsh conditions and exploitation. One of the most significant events in Surinamese history occurred in the late 18th century with the Maroon Wars. Maroons were escaped enslaved individuals who formed independent communities in the hinterlands of Suriname. The conflicts between the Maroons and the Dutch colonial authorities, lasting from the 17th to the 18th century, resulted in a series of wars and peace treaties. The suppression of Surinamese heritage is deeply intertwined with the historical amnesia surrounding the Dutch colonial period. The cultural contributions of the diverse ethnic groups in Suriname, including the Afro-Surinamese, Javanese, Hindustani, and indigenous peoples, have often been overlooked or marginalized. The languages, religions, and traditions that originated from this varied cultural mosaic encounter difficulties in gaining recognition within the broader narrative of Dutch history. The 20th century witnessed significant changes in the status of Suriname, ultimately leading to its independence in 1975. However, the decolonization process did not automatically result in a reckoning with the historical injustices and cultural suppression experienced by the Surinamese people. The legacy of Dutch colonial rule continues to influence the socio-economic and cultural challenges faced by Suriname and its diaspora in the Netherlands. The migration of Surinamese individuals to the Netherlands, particularly in the mid-20th century, adds another layer to the hidden history. Surinamese immigrants faced challenges of integration and discrimination, and their experiences, both in Suriname and the Netherlands, remain obscured within the broader Dutch historical narrative. In confronting the suppression of Surinamese heritage, there is an urgent need for a re-evaluation of the historical record. Recognizing the agency and resilience of the Surinamese people, both during and after colonial rule, is essential for a comprehensive understanding of the hidden black culture history in the Netherlands. 
It calls for a deliberate effort to amplify the voices of Surinamese communities and integrate their narratives into the broader Dutch historical discourse, fostering a more inclusive and accurate representation of the nation's multicultural heritage. Number four, the silence on black resistance. A crucial aspect of the hidden black cultural history in the Netherlands is the lack of acknowledgement of black resistance against oppression and discrimination. Throughout history, black individuals and communities have actively resisted systemic injustices, but their stories often remain overshadowed by dominant narratives. The Netherlands, with its legacy of colonialism and enslavement, have witnessed numerous acts of black resistance that challenge the prevailing image of a passive or subservient community. The 18th century saw the emergence of a remarkable figure in the history of black resistance in the Netherlands. Comina and Mentor, leaders of a slave uprising in the colony of Burbis. In 1763, these enslaved leaders orchestrated a rebellion that would come to be known as the Burbis Slave Uprising. This act of defiance, rooted in a desire for freedom and justice, lasted more than a year and left an indelible mark on the history of resistance against colonial oppression. In the context of the Netherlands itself, the 19th century witnessed the rise of prominent abolitionists who campaigned tirelessly for the end of slavery. Individuals such as Willem Edward Bosman and Johannes Kapodos were instrumental in advocating for the abolition of slavery in the Dutch colonies. Their efforts, combined with a growing international abolitionist movement, contributed to the official abolition of slavery in the Dutch Empire in 1863. The post-abolition period marked the beginning of a new chapter in black resistance in the Netherlands. Despite the legal end of slavery, black communities faced continued discrimination and marginalization. In response, Individuals like Anton de Kamm emerged as vocal advocates for racial equality and social justice. De Kamm, born in Suriname in 1898, became a prominent anti-colonial activist in the Netherlands during the early 20th century. His writings and activism challenged the status quo, shedding light on the systemic racism faced by black individuals in Dutch society. The mid-20th century witnessed another wave of black resistance in the Netherlands, fueled by the experiences of immigrants from former Dutch colonies. The 1950s and 1960s saw an influx of individuals from Suriname and the Dutch Antilles seeking economic opportunities in the Netherlands. However, they encountered widespread racism and discrimination. In response, grassroots movements and organizations emerged advocating for civil rights and equality. The 1970s brought a heightened awareness of black identity and resistance in the Netherlands. Organizations like the Black Women's Alliance and the National Platform Slavery Past emerged to address issues of racism, discrimination, and the historical legacy of slavery. These movements sought to reclaim and celebrate black culture while challenging the prevailing narrative of silence on black resistance. Contemporary black resistance in the Netherlands is exemplified by the activism against racial profiling, discriminatory practices, and the persistent racial wealth gap. Organizations such as Kick Out Zwarte Peak have often been at the forefront of challenging the racially insensitive character of black peak during the traditional Dutch center class celebrations. The protest and advocacy efforts by these groups underscore the ongoing struggle for racial justice and the refusal to remain silent in the face of systemic inequities. The silence on black resistance in the Netherlands is not merely a historical oversight. It is a reflection of broader power dynamics that have sought to suppress narratives of defiance and resilience. By uncovering and acknowledging these stories, the Netherlands has an opportunity to recognize the agency of black individuals and communities throughout history. It is a call to amplify these voices, challenge historical omissions, and reshape the narrative to reflect the rich diversity of black resistance that has played a vital role in shaping the multicultural identity of the nation. Number five, contemporary challenges and opportunities. 
Examining the contemporary challenges confronted by the black community unveils another dimension of the concealed black culture history in the Netherlands, while also exploring the opportunities for positive change. This chapter of the narrative unfolds against the backdrop of the 21st century, revealing persistent issues such as racial profiling, discrimination, and underrepresentation, as well as the burgeoning movements advocating for recognition, representation, and educational reforms. Racial profiling remains a stark and pressing challenge for the black community in the Netherlands. Instances of racial profiling by law enforcement have been documented raising concerns about systemic bias within the criminal justice system. The disproportionate scrutiny faced by black individuals in public spaces contributes to a climate of fear and unease, highlighting the urgent need for reforms in policing practices. Discrimination, both overt and systemic, continues to permeate various aspects of Dutch society. The labor market, education system, and housing sector are arenas where disparities persist. Black individuals often face barriers to equal opportunities and fair treatment, reflecting deeply ingrained biases that need to be addressed through comprehensive policy changes and societal awareness. One poignant example of these challenges is the Zwarte Piet controversy, which has ignited intense debates in Dutch society. The character, traditionally part of the Santa Claus festivities, has been criticized for its racial caricature. The resistance against Zwarte Piet has given rise to movements like Kick Out Zwarte Peak, advocating for the removal of the character from cultural celebrations. This controversy underscores the intersection of cultural traditions with racial sensitivity, requiring a nuanced conversation about the impact of seemingly innocuous customs on marginalized communities. The underrepresentation of black voices in various spheres, including politics, media, and academia, is a significant aspect of the contemporary challenges faced by the black community. Despite the multicultural fabric of the Netherlands, there is a notable lack of diversity in positions of influence. This underrepresentation not only limits the perspectives shaping policy and discourse, but also perpetuates a cycle of marginalization that hinders progress toward a more inclusive society. In response to these challenges, Grassroots movements and organizations have emerged to advocate for change and challenge the status quo. The Black Lives Matter movement, which gained global momentum, resonated in the Netherlands as well. Protests and demonstrations sparked conversations about systemic racism and police brutality, prompting a national reckoning with the need for structural changes. Educational reforms have also become a focal point in addressing the hidden black culture history in the Netherlands. The curriculum's lack of inclusivity and the omission of crucial aspects of black history contribute to a distorted understanding of the nation's multicultural past. Initiatives calling for a more comprehensive and diverse curriculum have gained traction, aiming to provide students with a more accurate and inclusive portrayal of history. Despite the challenges, there are tangible opportunities for positive change. The growing awareness of racial disparities and the advocacy for inclusive policies have prompted discussions at the governmental and institutional levels. The acknowledgement of these issues is a crucial step toward fostering a more equitable society that values and celebrates its diverse cultural heritage. Opportunities also lie in the power of storytelling and media representation. Platforms that amplify black voices, experiences, and achievements contribute to a more nuanced understanding of the hidden black culture history. By prompting diverse narratives, the media can challenge stereotypes, reshape perceptions, and contribute to the dismantling of ingrained biases. The contemporary challenges faced by the black community in the Netherlands are deeply intertwined with historical legacies. Yet, they also present opportunities for meaningful change. As the nation grapples with issues of racial profiling, discrimination, and underrepresentation, there is a growing momentum toward acknowledging and rectifying these disparities. The voices advocating for reform, representation, and educational inclusivity signal a hopeful trajectory, pointing toward a future where the hidden black culture history is not only acknowledged, but actively woven into the fabric of Dutch identity. 
conclusion. Unveiling the hidden black culture history in the Netherlands is not just an act of historical correction, but a step towards fostering a more inclusive and understanding society. Acknowledging the contributions, struggles, and triumphs of the black community is essential for building a collective identity that embraces diversity. By confronting the attempts to erase this history, the Netherlands has the opportunity to celebrate its multicultural heritage and work towards a more equitable and harmonious future.